Welcome back to the shop, guys. This week on the channel, I've got my good friend here, Nate Dog, the master of disaster. And this is Bubbles, his badass RV. He's actually remodeled it and designed it himself. It's really, really nice. Take it from a professional carpenter. He did a really cool job. There's a few projects inside that we want to attempt to try to fix. Some drawers moving around, maybe build him some food storage. It's going to be really cool. So stick around. I'm Stoner Erickson from Erickson Design Company. And I'm Nate Dog. Let's, Let's build, build something. something. Ta-da! We're gonna start off by fixing these drawers. Now, Nate had put some double-sided Velcro on it and it just wasn't strong enough to keep the doors closed while he was driving. So he's gonna start by removing that double-sided tape. Now I have some rare earth magnets that are really powerful and really strong. I'm gonna find the center of the drawer and then using a chisel and a knife, I'm gonna delicately notch it out so that the rare earth magnet sits below the drawer so you won't see it when it's open or closed. Next I'll take a Forstner bit and I'll drill down so that the magnet is actually inset in the drawer. and then I'll just use a screw to attach the magnet. Nate's gonna take the grinder and an old piano hinge and make a custom bracket or latch for the magnet to catch on. I want this to be really strong, so I wanna straddle two of these holes, so I'm gonna measure that out and Nate's gonna cut them off. Next, he's gonna move over to the rigid oscillating sander and he's gonna clean up any of the sharp edges on the sander. Nate's gonna use his pencil here and find the center of the inside of the drawer. And then using a self-centering drill bit, he's gonna drill out two holes and attach the bracket. Everything we used in this project we had in the shop, so that was kind of nice. We didn't have to run to Lowe's or Home Depot. And later this night, we loaded these drawers up and did a drive around to see if they would stay closed, and they did. I was super stoked. Next, we're gonna move over to the pantry area. Now he's put these baskets up here to hold his stuff, and I think we can come up with something a little nicer. I have some really nice hickory in the shop that I want to build this pantry box with, but first we're going to move the shop outside because it's actually a really nice day. I'm going to show Nate how to use the planer, but first we're going to flip it around because this lifts upside down underneath the rigid oscillating sander. We'll go ahead and cut our boards long because the planer is going to have some snipe in it and we want to cut that snipe off at the end. Nate and I actually haven't seen each other in about 20 years. He's on this journey across the country and he just showed up at my house and it was really cool to see him. I felt 17 again instantly. I kept asking him, who let these 17 year old kids into an old man's wood shop? I really felt young again and he did such a great job on the joiner here. Now that we've squared up one edge, now we're gonna take it to the planer and get our desired thickness, which actually came out to be three quarters of an inch. Over to the table saw, we'll take the crosscut sled and we'll cut off that little bit of snipe. Now I had to tell him to move his fingers out of the way so he didn't cut his hand off. Next we'll move on to the CNC machine. Now I kind of am giving Nate here just a little lesson on every machine in the shop. He used every tool, big and small, in the shop except for the drill press and the bandsaw, which I think is a great accomplishment. So I'm walking him through how to use the CNC machine, and then from here on out, I'm just going to guide him and let him use the CNC machine. We're starting by carving the handles that are go on the sides of the tray. We want to make those nice and soft so he can pull it in and out and load his groceries. I'll go ahead and clean up all the dust and pull off my carp, and then I'm going to send Nate over to the CNC. Now, Inventables x -Carp comes with an easel software, and I'm not a computer guy, you guys know that, and I could figure it out. 
Nate had no problem navigating how to start a car, home the machine, and get it going. And I'll tell you what, he was really enamored with watching it carve like I am too. I could just sit and stare at it carving, it's super fun. Once it gets to carving, we'll slide the enclosure closed to keep all the dust in. And after 20 years of not hanging out, it's amazing that our high five game's still on point. Nate reminded me how important it is to eat healthy, so that's what we engraved on the front of the sign. And if you like fun and creative videos like this, hit that subscribe button. Do it and do it now. Next, we're going to use a quarter round over bit to soften up the inside of the handles. We're going to take some blue tape along the edges as we glue this up. That way we don't have a lot of glue bleed out when we put it together and we don't have to sand that glue out of the corners. This is a really great trick and a quick tip so you don't have to do extra work at the end. We'll grab some bar clamps and clamp it up. After not seeing each other for 20 years, it was great to be in the shop working together, sharing experiences that we've had over the last 20 years. And Nate's put himself in a really cool position to travel the country, and I'm actually really jealous. We threw a bottom in it, and now we're going to take that same quarter round over bit and soften up the top edges. This will give it a really pro detail and really soft to the touch. Then we're going to do a dry fit before we stain it to make sure that we like it and we don't have to modify it in any direction. Man, it looks so awesome. We're so proud of ourselves. Next, we're gonna lay out three or four different stains. We'll thoroughly mix them and then we'll do a test swatch so he can actually pick which color he likes the best. I went ahead and branded my logo on the bottom of it for posterity and then we're gonna to get to staining it. The color that he picked is actually a rich walnut, but you've got to work fast with this because you don't want it to sit on there too long and you don't want it to be too dark. And we really got to lay it on thick on the front to get it down in the letters. And then I'll take an air nozzle and blow out all that extra stain so it will actually blend really well. We finished it off with a little fast setting polyurethane spray. And wow, what an improvement before and after. It just looks so great. Next, Nate saw some chalkboard paint in my shop and thought, hey, let's pull the refrigerator front panel off and paint that with chalkboard paint. I thought it was a killer idea. That way you can write down grocery lists and different things on it and draw on it and have people sign it. The important thing with the chalkboard paint is we're actually going to paint three coats and then we're going to sand with 220 in between. We're going to set this in the sun because we're trying to get all this accomplished as quick as we can, maybe in one day. Once all three coats have dried, we're going to reinstall it. You kind of have to bow out the center to get it to slide back into its groove. Then Nate will attach the top and bottom bracket. This made a huge difference. This was a quick, easy project. The brackets for the center table slash bed were a little bit messed up. We had to move the top one down and then we had to manufacture another bracket out of a bended steel here. So I'm going to lay that out. This is actually going to hold the swivel hinge for the table a little tighter so it won't pull out. As I was filming this and being all serious, Nate said, do you know who you look like? And turned and showed me his phone and it was this guy, Brian, the comedian. I was like, come on, man. Still razzing me after all these years. I'll go ahead and just clean this up with a file so there's no sharp edges. Then I'll move back in and install the bracket by pre-drilling a hole and then using a metal screw to screw it in. Now this worked really well. This table was way squirrely before we started working on it. And after we were done, it was solid as a rock. Nate's just gonna use his cute little broom to clean up the dust and check out the table and see if it worked. way more secure. This is the fourth project we did. Now we still had a little time left in the day. I think it was about 6:30, 7 o'clock right before dinner. So we went ahead and took some more of that hickory and we're going to run some biscuits in it and some glue and they suggested making a sink cutting board 
insert to give him more countertop space and I thought that's a great idea. My wife called us for dinner right as we were gluing this up, so that's good. It'll give us time for the glue to set up and dry, and we just hopped onto Easel and designed a sink cutting board. We pulled off the clamps and cleaned up the glue, and then we're going to take it over to the X-Car. Now, it's about 7.45 here, and we've been going since about 8 o'clock in the morning. It's amazing what you can accomplish when you have a good teammate you're working with. And we're going to let Easel do the work and do its magic. And we just kind of both stared at it and watched it carve. Don't forget to check me out on Instagram. I do previews to all these projects and it's a great way to stay in the loop. We'll clean up all the dust and then we'll pull the carve out. And we want to go check and see if it fits in the sink. And actually the first time it didn't, we had to take just a little bit more off of it. But I would rather do that than have to start from the beginning. It fit like a glove. Nice and snug fit, won't bounce around, won't rattle around, and now he has all this extra counter space. I wonder if he likes it. God, guys. We did a total of six projects in one and a half days. One that we didn't show you was we fixed a zipper on a cushion that he had, then re sewed it back up. But Nate's just going to take a quarter round over bit, soften up the edges, hand sand down to 220, and then use some walrus oil to finish off the breadboard. I learned so much today, seriously. Thank what a you. great time. If you're a van lifer, please hit that subscribe button. Plus, leave me a comment below if you have something in your van that you would like to see me fix or challenge me to fix. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Check out my other videos right here. And I'm Stoner Erickson from Erickson Design Company. And I'm Nate Dog. And, and we, we built, built something. something. Ta-da! Ta